matches in their hands for their share of time.
began to appear upon the horns, a tense interest and rapt attention was manifested among them and this was because everybody was stirred by the wish to learn how many forks would make their appearance on Beelzebub, since their number would indicate, in keeping with the sacred measure of objective reason, the gradation to which Beelzebub had attained. First one fork was formed, then another, and then a third, and as each fork made its appearance, a clearly perceptible thrill of joy and profound satisfaction was evoked in all those present. When a fourth fork began to appear on the horns, the tension among those assembled reached its height, since the formation of a fourth fork signified that the reason of Beelzebub had already been perfected up to the sacred, terminal, and hence there remained for Beelzebub only two gradations before attaining to the sacred Anglax. As this unusual ceremony was nearing its end, and before all the participants had time to recover their self-possession after their earlier joyful agitation, suddenly on Beelzebub's horns there appeared of itself a fifth fork of a special form known to them all. Thereupon all without exception, even the venerable Archangel himself, fell prostrate before Beelzebub, who had risen to his feet and stood transfigured in the grandeur conferred on him by the truly majestic horns which had arisen on his head. And all fell prostrate before Beelzebub because the fifth fork on his horns indicated that he had attained the reason of the sacred, Kodkulik, which is the last gradation of reason before the sacred Anglax. The reason of the sacred Anglax is the highest to which, in general, any being can attain, it is the third in degree from the absolute reason of his endlessness himself. But the reason of the sacred Kodkulik, to which Beelzebub had perfected himself, is also very rare in the universe hence even the venerable archangel prostrated himself before Beelzebub, for the degree of his own reason was as yet only that of the sacred, the Jindad, that is, three degrees below that of the reason of the sacred Anglax. When they had all risen to their feet, the venerable archangel, this time addressing all the assembled beings of different natures, proclaimed, beings created by one creator, we have just been worthy to be the first to behold the fulfillment of that which is the dream of all those present, as it is of all beings in the whole of our great megalocosmos. And now let us rejoice together and sing in exaltation over this privilege, which is a revivifying shock for our power to struggle against our own denying source, which power alone can lead us to that sacred Kodkulit attained by this son of our common father who, although he first, transgressed on account of his youth, was afterward able, by his conscious labor and intentional suffering, to become worthy in his essence to be one of the very rare sacred Kodkulads of the whole of our great universe. After this exhortation by the Archangel, all the beings present on the spaceship Karnak began to sing the prescribed sacred canticle entitled, I Rejoice. 
And when this sacred canticle had been sung, all the angels and cherubim, with the venerable archangel at their head, returned to the cosmic Igolianopti, which then grew away from the ship Karnak and gradually disappeared into space, whereupon the passengers and crew dispersed to their various places and the Karnak resumed its falling toward its destination. After this most great universal solemnity, Beelzebub, with his grandson and his old servant Ahun, who like all the other passengers of the spaceship Karnak were deeply moved by this unexpected event, returned to that part of the ship where all their talks had taken place about the men being the rising and existing on the earth. When Beelzebub, now with a transfigured appearance corresponding to his merits, had taken his usual place, Ahun, his old servant who had been close to him for almost the whole of his existence, suddenly fell prostrate before him and in a sincerely entreating voice, began to speak. Sacred Podculate of our great Megalocosmos, have mercy upon me and pardon me, unfortunate ordinary free-centered being that I am, for all my past disrespectful manifestations, voluntary and involuntary, toward your sacred essence. Have mercy and pardon me, pardon just this free-centered being who, though he has existed a very long time, yet to his misfortune, only because in his preparatory age none of his elders aided the crystallization in him of the psychic factors for the power to intensively actualize being part of duty indispensable to every free brain being, had until now been so blind that he was unable even instinctively to sense that uni being an unshakable reality beneath an exterior coated in conformity with the common cosmic trogoatogokrat and surrounding conditions, a reality sacred for every breathing creature, which bears the name of, of objective reason single quote quote having said this a moon stood as if sunk in a stupor silently expectant and beelzebub also in silence gazed at him with a look that was visibly full of love and forgiveness yet in which there could also be felt his essence grief and his resignation to the inevitable During this scene, Hassan stood apart in the posture known everywhere as the posture of the famous universal hermit, Karnatal Kararana of the planet Kermankshana. Quote. And a little later, when Beelzebub glanced around and noticed his grandson in this posture, he turned to him and said, What, my boy? Can it be that the same thing is proceeding in your presence as in our old Ahuns? To this question of Beelzebub, Hassan, in an uncertain tone unusual for him, replied timidly. Yes, almost. Sacred Podculate of our great Megalocosmos only with this difference that at this moment the impulse of love both for our Ahun and for the three brain beings of the planet Earth is functioning still more strongly in me. This impulse of love is growing stronger in me because, it seems to me, both Ahun and the three brain beings of the planet Earth have greatly helped me to become worthy of being an eyewitness of the glorification of him who is the cause of the cause of my arising and who until now I have called, my dear grandfather, but who has now become. Also for me, one of the sacred podculads of our great megalocosmos, before whom all will bow and before whom at this moment I have the happiness to stand.
quote. X, E K H, E K H. Explain Beelzebub, and giving his features the expression he was wont to assume during his sojourns on the planet Earth, he said. First of all, I wish to voice in the language of our venerable Mola Nasser in the thought that arises in me by association about Ahun's words, so unusual for him, and also about his unaccustomed posture. Our dear teacher would say in such a case, don't shed tears in vain like the poor crocodile that snapped at the fisherman and missed biting off his lower left half. And now take your usual places and let us talk a little more. Although we are now entering the atmosphere of our planet Karatas, we shall not land for a fairly long time because, as is usual with spaceships, our ship has to exhaust its acquired momentum before it stops at its destined mooring place. Quote, Hassan and Ahun immediately and wordlessly proceeded to follow Beelzebub's suggestion, though by their movements and the transparency of their inner psyche, it was evident that there had been a marked change in their attitude toward the person of Beelzebub since that all-universal event. When they sat down in their usual places, but not this time with the unconstraint they had formerly shown, Beelzebub turned to Hassan and said, First of all, my boy, I give you my word that when we get home, unless some event due to external causes independent of our essence prevents it, I will explain to you everything relating to your favorites that I promised to, but for some reason or other during this voyage of ours on the ship Karnak I have left unexplained. Meanwhile, if you have a particular question that needs explanation now, ask it. But I warn you that we have not enough time for me to reply in the form customary to our talks during this time, so try to formulate your question in such a way that my answer may also be brief. By such a question you can even show me once more to what extent your logical mentation has developed during my tales about the strange psyche of the three centered beings arising and existing on the planet Earth. At this proposal of his grandfather, Hassan thought deeply for rather a long time, and then, in a somewhat exalted mood, spoke as follows, sacred cause good and fundamental cause of the cause of my arising. After the solemnity which has just taken place, when your sacred essence was coated with a corresponding visible exterior and when thereby its full significance, which until then could not be perceived or understood by every three-brained being, became clear and perceptible to me, as well as to every other cosmic unit except yourself, every word spoken by you and every counsel of yours has for me the force of law. I must therefore strive with the whole of my presence to carry out the suggestion you have just made to me and try to formulate my question as well and as briefly as possible. Sacred Podkulit, and cause of the cause of my arising. In order that the convictions formed in me during this time, thanks to your explanations of the abnormalities proceeding on the earth, may become definitively crystallized in me, I still wish very much to have your personal and sincere opinion about the following. How would you reply if our all-embracing creator, endlessness himself were to summon you before him and ask you this, Beelzebub,
Mu, who are one of the hoped for, accelerated results of all my actualizations, manifest briefly the conclusions of your impartial observations and studies over long centuries of the psyche of the three centered beings arising on the planet Earth, and say whether it is still possible by any means to save them and to direct them into the becoming path. Single quote quote. Having said this, Hassane rose and, standing in a posture of reverence, looked expectantly at Beelzebub. Ahun also rose. Beelzebub, smiling lovingly at this question of Hassane, first said that he was now quite convinced that his tales had brought his grandson the results he had wished for. Then, in a serious tone, he went on to say that if our all-embracing uni-being creator should indeed summon him and ask him such a question, he would answer. Suddenly Beelzebub himself arose and, stretching his right arm forward and his left arm back, directed his gaze somewhere far off, and it seemed as though he were piercing the very depths of space. Simultaneously, something pale yellow, little by little appeared around Beelzebub, and began to envelop him, and it was in no way possible to understand or to discern its origin, whether it emanated from Beelzebub himself or was coming to him through space from sources outside of him. In the midst of this cosmic actualization, incomprehensible to all three brain beings, Beelzebub, in a loud voice not usual for him, proclaimed in penetrating tones. Thou all in the allness of my wholeness. The soul means now of saving the